Hi, this is Gilles, Radio Prepper. I wasn't planning on making this video this weekend, but I think it's long overdue. I get a lot of questions about unfed wire antennas, whether it's random length wires or half wave wires. And of course, with that, we use UNUNS, impedance transformers, and there is a lot of confusion about all that stuff. So it is time, I think, to uh, shade some light on it. Now, I was planning on making a video about my Elecraft K1, and yesterday I went to the uh, Col d'Ez, the uh, Four de la Revere. Uh, you've seen me going there before, and I was hoping to make some contacts. It didn't quite work that way. So have a quick look. Up in the mountains today again with the Elocraft K1 to have some fun. So as usual I have the uh, QRP guys tri-band antenna set on uh, 20 meters and I'm receiving a ton of signals. Unfortunately it's a contest. There's a contest going on and uh, it's very difficult to find uh, any uh, frequency to transmit on. But we have a great little setup at the park here with Patrick uh, filming, Frederick, and uh, the K1 is right here. Beautiful radio. And here's the uh, 20 meter band during a contest weekend. Not a single hertz of frequency available. Nothing. I mean, if you're not in the contest, if you're not trying to uh, to play with the contest, you can't operate. It's just impossible. Nothing. There's not a single frequency clear that I can use to call. Contest weekend. I couldn't place a single call, not one. I still do not understand why contesters cannot take a certain section of the band and not use the whole CW section for their contest. And not only that, but they use all the bands. Well, except the work bands, you know, 30 meters and stuff. But not everybody has an antenna for those bands and uh, it's not always practical to uh, to get on them. Now, it's not that I have anything against contests, you know, I think it's a good concept and it sells radios and why not? I'm just not into them. But it's the behavior of some people in this contest and not really actually the behavior of the contesters, I should say, but the behavior of the organizers because they have absolutely no regard for anybody else but the contesters. They don't realize in their little minds that there are some people who do not participate. So why not maybe say, okay, we'll have the contest between such and such frequency and we'll leave the other, you know, a bit of space for other people. They could also say, hey, avoid QRP calling frequencies like 14060 or 7030 because we end up having people who call on those frequencies non-stop non-stop with hundreds of watts for hours on end with maybe one second between calls why can't our contest organizers you know polish this stuff and say to their contesters hey you know don't do this on think of other people i don't know but we're not here to speak about contests you know guys you know I don't like contests, and again, nothing against contesters, it's more against the organizers and the way they set up those contests. Back to our wire antennas. Unfed antennas are important for a number of reasons. The main one is that they're easy to set up while being portable. You only have to attach them at one end, usually, 
uh, to set them up and that's easier to do than a dipole, a dipole being attached at both ends and fed in the middle. The unfed antenna, as its name uh, indicates, is fed at one end and you can string it horizontally or sloping or vertically any way you want. They are also pretty efficient, especially half-wave wires. Now, we'll see the difference between a random length wire, which is not really random, and half-wave length wires. Radio frequency current is AC current, alternating current. That means that the wave will start here, well, it's just the current going up, polarized positively here, will go back down, cross the zero, and goes back up the other way, and this is one cycle. This cycle takes a certain amount of time, and how many times it does this per second is the frequency. If you take, for example, the 20 meter band, that uh, starts at 14 megahertz, it does this 14 million times per second. This axis is the intensity of the current and this axis is the time or the space, same thing. The power that's generated by your transmitter is here. This is the volume of current that's being, well, hopefully radiated by your antenna. You have the same thing here, of course, but it's the same thing, just with an inverted polarity but it is a mirror image of the other one. So what you see here is two half-wave cycles, which makes a full wavelength here. Of course, you might ask, why isn't then an antenna usually a full wavelength? Well, it doesn't have to because the current switches polarity. Those two are the same. They can be in the same wire because they're not there at the same time. So all we need is in fact a half-wave wire. Because again, let's see here a half-wave current. Well, a half-period. This represents all the power radiated by your transmitter. Nothing's missing here. We have all the power generated is being radiated by the half-wave wire because it is the correct length. Now you might ask, what about the other half of the cycle when it changes polarity? Well, in this case, it is of course here. And the current, the power you send from your transmitter is here. And this looks like it's conflicting and would cancel each other, but remember, this is not at the same time. So all we have to consider is only one half period, one half cycle. This is why a half wave wire is the most efficient and the reason why most antennas are a half wave. Now, what happens if you shorten your wire? So this is a half wave wire and we're going to shorten it by this much. What happens here is that this current cannot exist. So something is amiss here. And the problem is that this current, which I will put in dashes, dotted line, which should be in a wire that's no longer there, this power here is still being transmitted by your transmitter. It has to go somewhere, and it always does. Problem is, it's not being radiated by your antenna because it's missing a chunk here. Same thing with a longer wire, the cycle will be here cut short and the current has to go somewhere also. Okay, it's not exactly like that, but this gives you a good idea of uh, why an antenna is supposed to be a half wave. Now, sometimes the missing part here is going to go to places you don't want it to go to. For instance, back to your radio, and that can overheat the final transistor and destroy it. Uh, you can get uh, RF burns on your fingers if you touch the chassis of your radio. It can go to the ground if your radio is well grounded. It can also radiate through the uh, shield of your coax cable, which in some cases is okay, but in many other cases is not. 
you can have a counterpoise. Uh, it can uh, radiate through that or being uh, dispersed through that, basically. Not really being radiated efficiently anyway. So usually when you don't have a half-wave wire, it's not the best way to go. Even a quarter-wave antenna. Take a quarter-wave antenna. Imagine this is a quarter-wave. This is the ground. The quarter-wave, uh, half of the current is going to go in the ground, as if there was a mirror antenna of a quarter wave long right here so it's going to make its own half wave antenna no matter what you do and the missing current here has to dissipate somewhere sometimes it's in your tuner <laughs> that's what it's for but it's not being radiated so half wave antenna is always better now there is something that happens with this and I'll go back to a dipole to explain it. This is a dipole antenna. It's probably the first antenna you learn about when you get into amateur radio or any kind of radio. It's comprised of a quarter wave wire here and a quarter wave wire here. And that makes of course a half wave. Now if we want to draw the current distribution for this antenna it's just the same as the half wave wire that we looked at earlier. It just goes like this. Now, AC current, when flowing through a wire, an antenna, or any other circuit, will encounter resistance. That resistance depends on the frequency. We call that impedance. Impedance is a kind of resistance. It is resistance just for AC current because, again, it depends on frequency. What happens here is that we send a current to the antenna, one goes up here, of course turns this way, and the other wire has the current going this way, and of course this way. Now you note that here, well, it goes in the same direction, <laughs> which allows the radiation of a radio frequency current here, which is what we want. This feeder here, is uh, what would be called ladder line. The advantage of, of having two parallel wires here is that, of course, as you know, when an electric current flows into a wire, it creates a magnetic field which goes around the wire. So let's say the magnetic field turns around this way. Well, since the current goes the opposite way in the other wire, the magnetic field will turn the other way here and they will cancel each other. So this setup here, parallel wires, doesn't radiate. But of course here we have our split wire here, quarter wave here, quarter wave here, the current goes in the same direction, boom, radiation. Now, speaking about resistance or impedance, with a dipole, if we feed the dipole in the middle, it has a, an impedance of about, I think it's about 71 ohms or something like that. That's just a measurement we use for uh, resistance or impedance. Your radio wants to see 50, but 71 is close enough. You're not going to have a big problem with that. You're just going to have a little bit of power dissipated by your radio or the cable, but it's not going to hurt anything and you won't lose uh, much efficiency at all. Let's take our wire again here, a half-wave wire, which could be a dipole or an unfed wire. It doesn't matter right now, but there are differences for impedance. So as we saw before, if we feed the antenna here in the middle, at this point, we'll get about 71 ohms. Let's close that back up and get back to our half-wave wire. Let's say we, you know, we're going to feed it about here. Well, here we probably would get around, uh, I don't know, about 600 ohms. That's a whole lot. Let's close that gap again and go to the end here. Now at the end it's very peculiar because we have the maximum impedance here which can go, you know, be like a few thousand ohms. Let's say 3,500 ohms. It could be 4,000. Could be uh, 4,700. You know, could be a lot of things. But usually it's going to be in this ballpark somewhere depending on frequency. Remember your radio wants to see 50 ohms. This is going to work. This is not 
your tuner can probably fix that and adjust the impedance so that your radio will see 50 ohms and the rest of the power will be dissipated in heat in the tuner but this here even a tuner will not tune that this is not going to work and we need an impedance transformer now here is a particular case this wire is not a half wave length wire it's what we call a random length wire but it's not really random is it because it's not a half wave so the definition in radio of a random length wire is a wire that is not a half wave long so we know that the distribution of current on this wire is either going to be something like this or something uh, bizarre like this and uh, you know it's just not working well basically and the impedance is going to be well it's not going to be around 50 ohms or even 70 ohms actually the impedance of a random length wire any length that's not close to a half wave is going to be a few hundred ohms and that's as close as you can get because you don't really know if it's random well you know you can calculate it you can probably measure it but usually uh, we use a random length wire for multi-band use and that's the difference we can also use a half wave wire for multi-band I'll explain the difference but a random length wire is used for multi-band radios and is used with a tuner but the tuner cannot always match the impedance difference so we're gonna get into transformers now all right pay attention here because this is the most important part we have here a half wave length wire and here we have a random wire anything not a half wave the feed point impedance meaning at the end of the wire is going to be eh, maybe 4000 ohms for the half wave wire that's too much, way too much even for a tuner. The random wire is going to have an impedance at the end of maybe 400, maybe 600, a few hundred ohms. That's okay for some tuners. You might be lucky and it's going to work or you might be uh, unlucky, it's gonna be a little too high and it's not going to work. Now, we have to divide those values here by a certain number and what we use for that usually uh, for a half wave wire is a 64 to 1 transformer and that's going to divide this impedance here by 65 and the resulting impedance will be 61 ohm you don't even need a tuner here your radio is going to work perfectly fine with this now on the other hand the random wire we are going to use a 9 to 1 ununun which is going to divide the impedance of say in this case 400 ohm by 10 it, you're going to get 40 ohms which again in this case would work perfectly fine without a tuner your radio would be perfectly happy to see this and you could operate but this fluctuates quite a bit depending on the wire length and the frequency so usually with a 9 to 1 ununun we're going to use a tuner as to with a half wave wire antenna which is used uh, usually on only one band but can be used on uh, harmonic bands basically on other bands related the impedance is fairly well known so uh, we use a certain divider basically uh, an unun which is 64 to 1 uh, often 49 to 1 works really well and we get the impedance we want and usually we don't have to use a tuner with this more efficiency less losses less efficiency more losses because of the tuner also less losses because of cable losses a cable is going to have very little losses if the impedance is close to its given impedance this might seem all very confusing but you don't need to know all this to make the right choice basically remember that if you use a random length wire for multi-band operation you're going to need a 9 to 1 ununun ununun by the way means unbalanced to unbalanced 
no need to get into that. If you use a half wave wire for single band operation or some cases multi band operation, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later, you're going to use a probably a 49 to 1 transformer or 64 to 1, something like that. It doesn't really matter because with a high impedance like that, whether you divide by 65 or 50 isn't going to make much of a difference. So what does it look like? Well, I have, uh, for instance, a very small 49 to 1 transformer here. Unfortunately, I have to redo this one because I don't have enough turns. Uh, I'll explain why, because the core is very small and it's not efficient and uh, there's just not enough turns around the core. Now, this is a very tiny core. Uh, you're going to lose a lot of power in this. This is just for size, but it's really not the best way to go. Now, this is the way to go. <laughs> this is an FT240-43. 43 is the material. I'll talk more about that. Uh, for QRP use, I use this. This is a 140-43. This is about 70% efficient, which is pretty darn good, but not as good as this. This is for the uh, 49 to 1 or 64 to 1 transformers, half wave wires. Now, I have built Ununs for, uh, you know, 9 to 1 Ununs for a random wire, and there is one that I highly suggest you look at for this, and I've mentioned it many times before. It's the Urshi Unun. E-A-R-C-H-I, uh, it's from the Hawaii uh, Radio Club and they have a great document describing the uh, manufacture of this uh, transformer which is very easy to do. I actually have two of them so uh, you can see here, that's what they look like and uh, it's the wiring is different from the, uh, from the other ones. I'm not going to talk much about this because I have a video on it so go check it out. But everyone should have a you know a couple nine to one ununs because it's not only to tune wires. You can tune a lot of things with it, like uh, barbed wire fences and things like that. And it's very useful. All right, before we go on uh, making a transformer, uh, a little word about uh, material, toroid material, because uh, it, they're not all the same. This is used to make nine to one ununs, and it's powdered iron core. Now, uh, look into the Urshi uh, Radio, uh, Hawaii Radio Club description and uh, they'll mention it. Uh, this will work for a 9 to 1 Unun. This one, as I've shown you already, is an FT140-43. It's made of ferrite material. It doesn't behave the same way as the uh, 200, you know, the red core here. You can't swap them. 49 to 1, 9 to 1. Not the same. All right, so I'm having just to uh, take the turns off here, take the wire off. I have to redo this because, again, not enough turns. Now, this one had two turns primary here, one turn, two turns, and 14 turns total. Now, how does that make a 49 to 1 transformer? Two turns primary and 14 turns total is a 7 to 1 ratio. 7 square equals 49, which make a 49 to 1 transformer. How does that work? Don't ask me. <laughs> I don't know. You can see those turns here are just a single wire, and this one is one millimeter. It's a little bit thick for this core. Now, instead of a 49 to 1, I'm going to make a 64 to 1 here, just to test it, you know. And I've seen it on the uh, qrpguys.com website. They have a kit for this, which is very affordable, and I suggest you look at it to get all the parts uh, at once, including a box. All right, so you see here the two primary turns. And uh, I have a capacitor here soldered between the two. This is where the uh, B and C connector would go. And I have a capacitor, a 100 picofarad capacitor soldered between uh, the two. These are the primary, the two primary turns, and the wires are twisted together, and I'll show you how to do this. This is one millimeter wire, that's what I usually use for my uh, transformers, but uh, for this one I'm going to use uh, 0 0.7 millimeter, uh, 22 gauge wire, because the core is smaller. I cut about three feet of it, and I'm going to 
go about 10 centimeters so maybe about four inches from the end here and remove about one centimeter or a quarter inch of insulation I have to be careful here not to break the wire and not to go too far now if you're going to use a B and C connector now is the time to slip the ring here in the wire and just set it in the middle right here where you remove the insulation and you will bend the wire around it trying not to break it now what you're going to do here is you're going to twist the wires around each other and be careful not to just twist one wire around the other one which remains straight both wires have to be twisted keep twisting until you run out and here I have my assembled wire for the uh, three turns of the primary I'll take my core here and thread the wire through it and of course here on the other end we have the uh, twisted pair with the uh, BNC ring it's going to be the ground connection so I'll say about now about that far maybe uh, this will be just about like this yeah probably so that is one turn every time the wire goes through the core that's one turn one two three turns primary now there's a little bit too much twisted here so I'm going to untwist the wire and this is going to be the hot lead connection basically the center of the uh, B and C connector now this is going to be 24 turns total so I already have three turns I'm going to keep threading until I get halfway to 12 turns so four five six and 12 now I have 12 turns including the uh, three turns primary now the 13th turn is uh, going to be a little bit peculiar I don't have to do this by the way I could just continue 12 13 14 and go up to uh, 24 turns right here but I want my wire to come out on the opposite side here of the BNC connector so number 12 is going to go through the core and it's going to come out here now this still counts as a turn so that's 13 and I'm going to thread number 14 15 16 and 24 the only reason I went through the core here is because I wanted the wire to come out on the opposite side and that's it three primaries three turn primaries of twisted wire ground connection center connection three up to 12 13 turn inside 14 15 up to 24 and here's the antenna connection we are going to solder a capacitor a 100 picofarad 100 or 150 doesn't matter high voltage so uh, i use 3000 volts capacitor and i'm going to solder it between those two connections here the bnc connector will be here and the antenna wire will be connected here it has to be a half wave wire remember now i put it in a nice little box with the uh, 100 picofarad capacitor i'm going to solder the lug here the ground lug and of course i can't see anything i forgot what the capacitor is supposed to do but everybody uses it so now I'm going to test with my ohm meter that I actually have a short because of course this is a DC short. We're dealing with AC current of course so for AC it's not a short. Alright we have a good connection. I don't have a screw here so I'm not going to finish it today but uh, I will put a screw through here with a wing nut so that I can attach any kind of half wave wire not random wire remember this is a 64 to 1 transformer it's for half wave wires also do not put uh, your transformer in epoxy <laughs> I know I tried twice and uh, I guess I wasn't dumb enough the first time it didn't work 
Uh, I heard that hot glue from a hot glue gun can help secure things in the box, but uh, without affecting uh, the magnetic field. But epoxy certainly messes things up, so don't use epoxy. Man, this is a long video, <laughs> but there is a couple of things I need to go over, and that's the materials. I'm using 43 materials. There are other materials, but 43 is particularly good between 80 meters and 20 meters. So 3.5 to uh, 14 megahertz. Above 14 megahertz, up to 30 megahertz, I would use 52 material. Now for 6 meters, that's a little special case, I would use 61 material. So I would choose, for instance, a FT240-61 for 6 meters. And for 6 meters, if you want to make a half wave antenna for 6 meters, do not use more than two turns primary and 14 turns total or it won't work. Now I know some people will be asking should I use a counterpoise or radials or anything like that? Well if you're using a half wave wire you don't have to because you have your whole length of wire and the current is well distributed throughout that wire. You don't need a counterpoise or radials, especially not radials. Although some people say that a 0.05 wavelength counterpoise does help but really I've never had any problem with stray currents coming back to the radio with a half wave wire I have had nasty surprises though with random wires and I remember once I was on 30 meters with my aircraft K1 not the one I have now the first one I built and uh, I was using an aluminum key and I was skiing and I had a random wire that I had tuned with the internal tuner and I felt uh, needle pricks in my fingers. Now that was using only 5 watts but I can imagine someone using a random wire with a lot of power and uh, those currents are not really well distributed or you don't have a good uh, RF choke, another subject. You could be uh, <laughs> really surprised by uh, you know getting shocked or getting burnt by uh, radio frequency current. So random wires are not so great. Uh, I still have a 921 Unun, I have a couple of them. I use them only when I have to, but I prefer half wave wires or you know even dipoles, but in this case unfed half wave wires is my preference. So with a random wire, I would say definitely yes, use a counterpoise uh, or, or more than one, <laughs> you know, radials, uh, anything to uh, get rid of this current that you don't want or, you know, ground, make a ground lug on your transformer and uh, put that uh, with a spike in the ground. I almost forgot, uh, some companies do make half-wave unfed tuners and random wire tuners like qrpguys.com, I've already mentioned them, but there are other ones like uh, qrpkits.com. There is also a uh, Facebook group uh, about half-wave unfed antennas describing uh, how to make 49 to 1 transformers. You have also kits like the EA3GCY half-wave unfed tuner and others that I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting and I have used plenty of them, but uh, uh, if you search for half-wave unfed tuner, you're going to find uh, quite a few of them. You can buy those antennas already made also from companies like PAR and LNR Precision. Now, I'm not getting paid to say this, I uh, just use their products. Uh, also, Chameleon Antennas has some uh, as well. There are quite a few companies making these antennas with the transformer already made and the wire included. I use one from myantennas.com, the 8010P, great antenna also. And I'm sorry if I'm forgetting to mention them, I, I, there are so many of them. The fact remains that uh, it's much cheaper to make one yourself. Of course, you might not want to do that. And, you know, I have bought those antennas for myself because some of them are uh, clearly better made than what I can make. But if you're on a budget, it's very easy for probably $10 you can make one yourself. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Uh, no testing, no field operations. Well, you saw the K1, but uh, next week I uh, hope to, uh, to do something special. We'll see. Every weekend I'll try to uh, get out. Now the weather is getting great here, so uh, uh, I think it's going to be uh, an interesting summer. Have a good one.